you have, let's uh, get it up too, so we can go to the scripting process and everything. Just uh, refresh it. All right, so just a little uh, overview of the system. So we have the so we have three parts, as you know. We have the part on the Android phone itself. So we have the AC2 Android to run on the phone and do the testing. And once you, you have done the testing, either it's outdoor or indoor, you upload the log to the server where the report is generated. So this part is the heart of it, and this is the part where we try to customize to, uh, to customize a report to your requirement in terms of what you give to the customer. So if it's the best report you give to the customer. So this is the second part is a report. And the third part is a replay, which allows you to analyze the log. I think right now we uh, move that to Gladiator. So uh, from testing from the Android, you upload to the log, upload the log to the server, you get the report, and then the third part is you can use our own replay tool, or you can uh, put it to Gladiator, put it into Gladiator, or use the uh, other post processing, which we also uh, provide uh, CSV or MHT or whatever PDF file that can help you conduct those analysis and KML as well. So. No further ado, um, the uh, overview of the menu first. So the first is the start script. As you know, uh, if you already have a script in the phone, you can press this one and choose the script you want to run. Second is network monitor. Uh, network monitor is uh, allows you to just view the network parameters and everything without recording it. But with the newer versions, uh, the one. 3.0.161 that we have released. Uh, once you have done the network monitor, you can save it as well. When you press back, it's going to ask you if you want to save it in case you find something interesting. The next thing is new script. It allows you to create a new script. Open script allows you to fix the script that, uh, or edit the script that you have created. Delete script allows you to uh, uh, delete the script you have already created in case there was something wrong with it. Okay, and the next one is settings. We, there are many, many settings that we provide. Uh, settings, uh, for example, there, now we split it into three parts. There's a setting for the manual mode, there's a setting for the automatic mode, and there's a setting, general setting. So in the manual mode, there's a settings to uh, import the cell files, import the cell files into the phone. Uh, it's there, and also it controls the notification. Controls the notification means uh, uh, whether it gives you a voice notification when power goes off or GPS is disconnected. It's also in the settings and it also allows you to control the email that will be sent to the address once the record has been generated. The next thing is uh, upload logs. When you are done testing, press upload log, it goes to the server. Okay. Uh, the next one is uh, check for update. Uh, as mentioned, uh, please do not update the firmware of the phone, but you can check on the update and this will just update the ACQ. One thing we have seen is that many people are using older versions of ACQ, which, uh, which uh, we uh, strongly suggest that it be updated to the latest version because there are the carries uh, fixes, new features as has, that has been requested into this new version. So please update when there's a prompt to update the ACQ. And the next one is manage log, that's a new one. Uh, when you have done testing and upload the log, you can go to manage log. It's a new menu, manage log. It allows you to uh, look at the list of the log we have uploaded. And if the report has been created, you can click download and you can download the report into your phone and view the report on that. That's uh, the next one. And the next one, a new one, is replay log. So if you have done the testing, you can click replay and replay the log on the phone just in case if you want to do some analysis on the phone, you can do some fundament, uh, some basic analysis by uh, replaying the lock itself. And the next one is video. This is a video of uh, us doing some guide on, let's say, for example, Bluetooth connection, how to get GPS, those kind of things, or, and how to uh, pull the lock from the phone into the PC. Because in some cases, uh, you want to send the lock to us in a managed log, you can send from there directly, but if you want the log for yourself for any other reasons, you can 
uh, there's a video on how to do that. And the next, the last one is support, which is uh, uh, sending an email to us. Um, it sends to acqhelp at gmail.com. It goes to everyone in the team, so we see it. If you send it with an at Ericsson handle, then it also goes to Bobesa and also Pankasa. So this is the general outline of the menu. I think everybody is familiar with it. Okay. Okay, this is a network monitor. As mentioned, you can uh, go in and build the network monitor and see the tab. We will go into the tab once this part is done and then we can uh, go into each radio parameters of each technology. The next one is, uh, this is the UI. So a new, a new feature, actually not that new, but I don't know if anyone is, is, if everyone is aware of it, is that you click on the, when you're testing, if you click on the upper left, there's a tab that comes out and you can split the screen. So you can view two information side by side at the same time. So you might want to see GSM and GSM cells at the same time. You can do it with this. And, huh? no, no need, not yet. And since uh, we have many, uh, and since we have so many tabs now, in the future we are trying to uh, do a category, category. So you put it up in a split panel. It allows you to just choose GSM, and the tab will be reduced to just GSM parameters only, because otherwise it takes a long time to shuffle through all these new uh, parameters that are being provided. Next one. Oops. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, also, one other thing, one thing that people sometimes forget is that when you do drive testing, if you come out to home for whatever reason, sometimes you are in idle, in idle, in wait, for example, and want to make a call, you can do it. Just press home and do anything you want. Sometimes people do uh, come out to home and then do some user experience tests, like they go into WhatsApp to see the truth and then to look at the radio throughput, for example, you can do that by pressing home, uh, do any activities you want outside. And then drag the, and then drag the top screen down, and then there's a, a synchro service here that you can click back and you can go back into ACQ. We'll show the same on the real live demo of the Android. Yes, sir. Answer. Is it? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, this is a sample of the let's say a new script called voice call. So, for voice call. Uh, well, we try to make it very familiar to anyone who has used uh, the traditional. Uh, PC based drive test tool. So, so uh, when you come into new script, it's very uh, simple. So we have a script screen, and then we have a plus to add new statements, and then save to save this script. That's it. Um, when you start, please tell me if the right red light stop blinking for okay. whatever reason. Thank you, sir. Okay. So. Uh, uh, so, okay, so let's say we want to start a voice script. Now, if you remember from the traditional test tools on PC, the central part of everything when you create a script is a loop, because you want to the test to keep going and going and going until you stop testing yourself. So you need to have to add a loop up top. So whatever you do, so whatever you do, uh, when you're a new script, if you want to, so let's say, do a voice call, we start by pressing plus, and then we choose loop, and then there's a default count for the loop, which is 10,000. The reason it's a lot is because we want the test to keep going and going and going forever. So we put in a 10,000, that is fine, press save, you will find there's a loop come up on top of that. Thank you, sir. And now that we have the loop, we have to give. Uh, we need to make a decision of what is being going to, what is going to be added into the loop. And in our case here, it is voice dial. So we press plus again, choose voice dial, and then there will be this uh, these options. On voice dial, it's uh, very simple. Uh, the first part is the telephone number, of course. That's uh, whoever you want to call, and the duration. Duration is the length of the call. Uh, in seconds, and the answer timeout and setup timeout is uh, self-evident. Setup timeout means if you press call and the call is not set up on the other side within 60 seconds, then it's a timeout. If the answer timeout means if it starts ringing on the other side and no one picks up in 60 seconds or whatever, 
then it's a uh, answer tunnel. And then once you press save, the new statement will be added into the loop. If you will notice, and I think everybody has noticed, if you're using a loop and then there's a, and inside the loop there's a space, there's two space, it means this statement is inside the loop. It means that when it has, when you test, it will check, okay, I see a loop, the program will check and it says, okay, I see a loop, what is in my loop? And it says voice dial. So it will do voice dial for, it will do voice dial when it is done, it checks what else is in the loop. Oh, nothing. What do I do? I do voice dial again. So this is how the system goes. I see some uh, mistakes sometimes that we put a loop but there's no space. So what happens is it just doesn't keep looping and then you have to start the script again every time, which is annoying. Okay. And after the Y style, uh, this is one thing we see is that uh, please add a weight into it because this the reason is if you keep dialing sometimes and it's uh, let's say it's uh, you cannot make a new call because sometimes the OS is still like oh you're still making the old call or whatever. So you will see uh, artificial call blocks because of that if you keep pressing. I think one of the reasons we see uh, uh, complaints from customers that when they cannot make call, they make a new call again immediately without waiting. So uh, the channel sometimes are cleared or something and they just keep experience call block when in fact if you wait a few more seconds then they will be able to call. So always put in another wait. So add wait and the duration is up to how you decide it. Uh, the spec says 45 seconds but nobody is a patient. So sometimes we use 5, sometimes we use 10, but whatever. So now once you add this in, in the loop, there is a loop, there's a voice dial, dial and then there's a wait. So if we execute this script now, it will do voice dial to this number and when this is done, it will wait 45 seconds and do the voice dial again. Thank you. Uh, the thing we have to watch out for, and this is very important, uh, this is the normal thing we see when we create a new script. So there's a loop, and inside there's a voice cell, and then there's a wait. This is the right one, because when the program runs, it says, oh, there's a loop, what do I do? Oh, I do voice cell. Once I have done voice cell, I do a wait. But if this is the wrong way, and sometimes uh, then sometimes it looks like this, they say, okay, what is in the loop? Nothing. Because it will only consider things that are you know, being spaced as being in the loop. So it says, oh, nothing in the loop. And then it just do voice out once, do wait once, and say, I'm done. So sometimes people say, I added the loop already, but it's not working. It's because it's looking like this. So if it is not looking like this, and you need to make it from here to here, what you do is uh, you, thank you, sir, you click on the statement you want to put into the loop, so you click into Y style, and actually, this thing can help you do many things. So when you click on it, there's a bar that will appear. There's an up and down and pencil. So what it means is you can also edit this statement here. So for example, you are calling uh, your wife in this script, but you want to call your mother-in-law instead. So uh, you just click on this, you just click the pencil, and then you change your number. Simple as that. Okay, but we are talking about putting things into the loop. So we have a do we have the wrong script here? There's a loop, but nothing in the loop. So we click on voice dial, and then we press up, and then voice dial will be put into the loop like this. Actually, you can also change the sequence of the script as well using this. So if you want to do wait first, and somebody do that, because some a lot of people do that because uh, a wait before the execution of the statement allows the phone to capture GPS, for example. Or if you are testing a CSFB, CS fallback, uh, you want to keep a wait there so that it, uh, let's say, it uh, goes back to uh, LTE first before doing another call and going to CSFB. So uh, you can change the sequence by clicking and then pressing down so the test uh, reversed. Yes. Okay. So if we do it to A2, now we have a correct script. So that's uh, just an idea about how to do looping, is add a loop, do add a script, but if it is not, then we can click on it and change the sequence or put things into the loop. Okay. Now if anyone has created this script, uh, I don't see anyone creating it, but uh, 
Now that we have created a script, we can start that script by clicking on the start script, click, clicking on the script to use, and then that's it. Uh, we start using the, uh, and then it starts testing, which we will go into more, de into more detail on each other tab after this is done. So after the testing, uh, there are a few ways to stop the testing. First is that uh, you just press back or the loop ends, but I don't see the loop ending any. If you're putting at 10,000, then we don't, we won't ex expect the loop to end in our lifetime. So what we do is we press back, and then there's a question that says, do you want to save block file? Now this is quite important. <laughs> so there are three things you can do. You can do cancel. Cancel means uh, you go back to the testing. You go back to the testing, it continues testing. No, I mean, not here, no, not here. Uh, it doesn't test anymore, so it stops testing, but it stops testing without saving the log, because the question is, do you want to save the log file? So you press no, then it comes up without saving the log, which is very scary. So uh, right now we add another question to see if you want to save the log really, if you really want to come up without saving the log, and this is why we say, please update the ACQ, because we add these this things to help you make sure. Uh, so if you press no, uh, it will ask again whether you want to proceed. And then yes, yes means you just want to save the log. And uh, you can also add the tag, which is actually the log name. So we can say Sinaga uh, phase 1, Sinaga phase 2, Sinaga phase 3, Inuit, press save, and that's the log name. And you can upload the log. Uh, when you upload the log, you can upload either all or choose one. Actually, for the Indian edition, we automatically try to upload the log whenever you finish testing. And then you upload the log, and then you can check the result on the dashboard. check the result on the dashboard. This result, if it is here, it will also be reflected on the manage log as well. If you go into manage log, you will see it. So let's say if you, I come to the dashboard, there's log from 1008, which is just now CDMA, AP, bus scan, not this one. Let's pick one from this morning. So uh, if you are using the dashboard, the first thing you can do when you come in is uh, you can search just your, just your phone. So you can press search. And usually the most used functions are here, which is searching for your unit name. You can click come in. You can search either with IMI. So I usually, we usually recommend the last three or four digits of the IMI. Very easy to remember. Or just the name. So let's say NPI. NPI will just be sorted. Okay, the systems, it means that you can choose to see all the logs with those systems in the log. So if you want to see LTE log from this morning only, I just click LTE. I can also choose the operator I want to see, the device group, but not many people use that, so I'm not going to it. Uh, I can choose the type of the log. There are three types. One is uh, you do indoor, which is you take a picture of the bias cape, and then you do walk testing. Has anyone tried that before? Watch out. Okay. And then there's one with GPS. Is uh, you go outside with GPS. That's the uh, most traditional type of GPS testing. And then no map. No maps mean you are not indoors, so you do not upload the picture indoor. But then you do not also use GPS either. So this is no map. And you can sort by time as well. So this means you can sort by uh, today. The default would be today to today, but you can also search back in time. Uh, and you can also search by today, by three days, by seven days, which you will not click because otherwise it takes too long to load. Now if I search for LTE log today, we see something from Chennai. Yeah, 
have here. So you will see if you log into the dashboard, you will see the time that you're testing. Thank you very much. So uh, time that you start, time that you end, the name of the phone that you use. So you can search using this. I can just search Lenovo LT and I just see Lenovo LT. This is uh, the train. Oh, you went. You came in on a train. So <laughs> this is the train. So this is the name of the law. So this one just to let it let us know that okay, I was using the train. And then this is a script name. This is the name of the script that you use. You can also search using this one. And these are the stats, it's a throughput and radio. And I can actually customize what I see by pressing here. And then I can choose whatever I want to display. So I want to see LTE only because I'm very focused on LTE. I don't want to see call drop. I want to see just download, upload. So now only LTE parameters are displayed. And in, when it comes to reporting, we can choose to download so many things. We have uh, default is the replay. This is to be open in our replay tool or Gladiator. So we use this one. If you want to download just the report in Excel, you choose this one. If you want to download uh, CSV, you choose this one. If you download the PDF, we also provide PDF now. Last time we did a workshop, somebody said when I deliver file to customer, they want uh, evidence that it has not been tampered with. So PDF cannot be tampered with, supposedly. So PDF also and also Google Earth. So these are the five, now five type of export and output we are providing. You can also do one thing, but this uh, I think we need to uh, confirm first is if you go to the upper tab you can do a manage phone and use manage theme to assign your own theme so if say I slow this is wrong I want to use my own theme I can come to this part of the dashboard click add and then I can add the system I can add I can search any other parameters <coughs> can choose that in the report the, com the cumulative line should be reversed as well. Argument, I can use it for WCMA for example, if I want ISCP but, but I want the second best, I can use ISCP. I can choose uh, the argument 2, first best, second best and this is uh, our default setting. If we don't have a default setting, we will tell you and you can also set your own range here color, range, whatever. So once it's done, once it's added, okay. So once it's added, you can click on the device you want to assign it to, and then just click assign. So the theme from this point on will change to whatever the parameters you put in here. So one thing to be careful of is if you just put in one parameters for X level, then it replaces the rest. So you will instead in the future you see KPI and then RX level only instead of the RX call and whatever we are seeing right now. So uh, you can assign your own theme even. Uh, if it has already been assigned before and not from a central one, you can search from EMI. And use that as a base for example let me give you an example but this you need to have a settings before in the dashboard because oh, this one doesn't actually have it then or i can even uh, use theme from excel so when you're in excel so when you do an uh, if you have a replay and you do a export in excel you can set the settings into your pc and then you can choose the settings from here open it and it will be open it here and you can further assign it to the phones. So this is here to help. Um, we also have a cell, but I think that is from the central to do it. Oh, another thing, if you're not doing the drive test yourself, uh, there's this screen called the device status. Oh, I'll drop it, punch up. 
uh, called the device status. If you come in here, then you can search, just like you can search on the device. Let's say let's search Lenovo, press search. I can see my own device and I can go into the EMI. I can click on the EMI and I can see the history too. So this is for if you are not testing it yourself and you give it to others. You can build a history, so uh, I can see. Oops. I can see. Oh, sorry. So I can see the date of the. Let me wait until this status has been installed. So, so I can see uh, the time. This is now. Now, as in now, now, the software version. So, if you're using the old version, you can actually see on here. Uh, when you start script, actually, it sends information back to the server as well. So, uh, we can see what script the user is using. Uh, you can also come here and look at the GPS location of the tester. So, uh, whenever there's a wait uh, statement in script, it will send information to the dashboard, and you can semi track your results as well or yourself as well. Uh, my, the ad card is not very fast, is it? Okay. And I can also click here. This show route means it opened the log, uh, opened the map, and there's a, the route as well. So every time there's a wait, it will send up a uh, <coughs> little F, uh, GPS pointer so you can track where where the drive route has been roughly or at least if the phone is lost uh, during testing up to a point where they switch off and secure the phone you can still see some maybe some location of, what, of where it has been so uh, So this is uh, this is the general go through of the Y script. Has anyone doing? Does anyone has questions about how to do scripting? Otherwise, I would cover a bit of the scripting issues I have seen in the mail a few uh, these few weeks. That we now that we are doing more data tests is that there have been questions about FTP script not working and. Now, whenever you do FTP, it's like doing a voice call. So you add FTP into the loop, and then you go into information. Uh, a few things to keep in mind. When you do FTP download, the file name is not the file size. The file name is just the, when you do FTP download, when you execute the script, it will go to the server that you have identified here with the IP and password, and it will find a file named 10 MB on the server. So it will not find a file, si file with a size 10 MB. It will not. It will find a, si a file that is named 10, no space, big M, uh, big B. Can you, can you show on FileZilla? Alright, yeah. 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 I can show on FileZilla. Because this is a very common mistake among the release. They say that FTP download script is not working. Earlier it was working, now it is not working. Something is not working. That only happens if the file actually is not there or the name of the file is not as per the file which is present on the server. We, we are going to show, show you like. Let me show you the... Uh, let, let me check. Let the custodian check the server.
Oh, there it is. So uh, this is the uh, sample. So when the when you do FTP download, what happens is the ACQ actually it goes into this into the FTP server. So you put in the host, the username, the password, and then when it comes here, it finds a file named 10 MB. So it's not looking for the file size 10 MB because we never know because it cannot know. It just find a file named 10 MB. So when you do FTP testing, it's very important to make sure that the file you are in, the name of the file you are entering in FTP download is exactly the same as the file on the server, and it must exist. So you cannot just say 10 MB and then uh, and then uh, and then the phone will create the file for you. No, it, will not, it doesn't work like that. Uh, it connects to the server and then it asks the server if it has a file with the exact same name as you put in in the script. So if it is 10 uh, lowercase m, uppercase b, then you have to exactly put in that uh, to, so that it matches the file on the server. So it's very important to check with the guys who control the FTP first on what is the name of the file and if the file exists. If there's a .x, .ra, .whatever, you have to put in there as well and it will start downloading. Second thing, it cannot be in a folder, so it has to be in the root of the server. This is just a, one of the common mistakes we see, and it's very sad to see that you know you do a half hour drive test and then uh, the FTP login succeeds, but there's no file. So based on the FTP download and HTTP download as well, kindly make sure that the file you put in exactly the same name. Yes, sir. All right. Yeah, when, when you start testing, uh, and since you put in the loop anyway, uh, and there's an audio notification, so when you uh, when you start testing in the first loop, and we will show you when you do the Lenovo, in the first loop, it should at least connect, and then the throughput should start, should start moving if things are correct. If things are set up correctly, then they, at least the throughput should, should start moving, and then we can go ahead. Actually, another error we find is that, but I don't know if it's, uh, widespread here is that, but this one is, you can see in Thailand is that sometimes the operator gives us a special APN SIM. So the special APN SIM it cannot connect to some server and it will automatically fail anyway. So this is uh, when you start testing, it's good to look at the first look to see that the FTP is connecting correctly. Okay, uh, that is the FTP. So it's uh, as mentioned, uh, the IP, the username, password, and then when it gets in there, it has to find the file with the exact same name. Uh, sessions mean if you're putting in two, then it means it download is downloading this file, two of these files at the same time. So it's not 10 MB; it will be 20 MB. So it will be 10 MB once, uh, 10 MB, 10 MB. Some people do that because they believe you know multi-threading gives a uh, higher maximum speed. So uh, put, you can use this as well. Timeout, there are two timeout, one timeout, but you can set up the same way. Uh, timeout means so in 600 seconds, the files are completely, totally downloaded, it fails. In actuality, timeout means uh, if during the 600 seconds, there's a period of time where no data is streaming at all, then it also counts as fail. This is for some customer who believe like, oh, the user will not wait if the throughput is not moving for more than 20 seconds. So this is another timeout, but this is more of a user experience timeout and not a file download complete timeout. Upload is the same, but for upload, uh, we created a file for you. So we ran for, for download, it find a file on the computer, but for upload, the phone will generate a random string of, of random string, uh, random file composed of strings with the same size you put in here. The convention is just that, so for this 5 MB, it has to be, you have to put in a number with no space, and you put in either MB or KB, we don't have GB yet. So if you want to do one gigabyte for LTE, just put in 1,000, 
Yeah, one two two one zero two four MB. So if you want to do one gigabyte, okay, then that's it. So the difference, FTP <coughs> download, it has to be exactly the same name, but for upload, you can input any numbers you like as long as it's follow this convention. Numbers followed by uh, MB, KB in all uppercase or in all lowercase. And that's it. Oh, we will show you uh, in the live. In the live. And the, the, the name of the file which is actually getting created on that too. Is that oh, oh, no, I can shoot. There must be some. There might be, but man, there may be no information. Yeah. Yeah, it is a temp file, but size, size. Yeah, size. This is five MB. So this kind of file gets created on the server actually. Uh, on the when you are entering na file name five MB uh, on the server while doing a FTP yeah. upload, this kind of file will get generated on over there. Yes, sir. So it's uh, so I create a temporary file with this image. And it's a and if some uh, random string, so it don't doesn't overwrite each other on the server. So once this file is created on the phone, it gets uploaded. Okay. One thing about upload testing is to make sure that the server has enough space. Now that's another thing. Uh, we see some cases where uh, upload always fail, and it turns out that the server is full. So this also has to put into consideration. It's basically now that we are running, going into LTE, we are doing more data tests. This is uh, the key thing about that. Okay. Okay, then this again, loop is always important no matter what kind of test you do. Okay. There's uh, also browse, but it's uh, it's. Uh, for browse, the difference is, is actually using the Android's uh, web engine to open the web page. So uh, you put in the uh, the address, and then the sessions mean how many like how many tabs you are downloading, and then the timer. You can disable or enable JavaScript. That uh, that can be done, but with JavaScript, uh, oh, this is a bit advanced. But with JavaScript. And I don't think people use it that much, but with JavaScript, it means that uh, it will keep, as you know, in Java, when you open the web and there's an ad, like uh, ad, the ad can keep moving, it can keep moving, it will not stop. So if you enable this, the timeout will be, oops, the timeout will be, okay, the timeout will be the ones where you uh, specify in here because the, the Android doesn't know when the web, ha uh, when the page has stopped downloading because uh, JavaScript it keeps going on and on and on and keeps loading. So you enable <laughs> JavaScript, the time it will stop downloading when the timeout is reached instead of when the page is fully loaded, like in the case where you disable the JavaScript. This is the same capital of loop. Okay. Another thing is YouTube. I don't know if, uh, yeah, but for LTE and data, I think we will be testing this more. Is uh, for YouTube testing, uh, the the phone will open the YouTube video that we have set up. It will play it and it will record the throughput and record other statistics like the stuttering. Stuttering means when it, how many times it stops during a play or how long it stops when you do a play of a video. So the key thing about YouTube is when you create a script, there's a video ID. So uh, video ID, video ID means the video you're going to play. Timeout means the timeout uh, before, if the video is, hasn't completed downloading by this timeout, then it fails. One thing to keep in mind is that because the video ID are different and people can choose a video of however length they want, so they can choose a 10 minutes video, they can choose an hour video. So this timeout, you have to make sure that it fits with the video itself. So. Um, if the window is five minutes and we should check first before we start, then the timeout should be uh, three should be three hundred plus a bit more seconds to give time for the for the loading. And the timeout before playing means uh, when it starts uh, waiting and waiting until the video starts. How long can we wait? And then quality means uh, if you click on this, it will choose the HD version. So this is a bit uh, this is the thing about YouTube. Uh, the video ID. 
is uh, interesting. So if you want to download the video that you want, let's say I want to download uh, a video. Let me choose a video before. In the meantime, can I have the attendance sheet, please? Yes. Already captured. Have you guys also? Okay, uh, let's say, uh, okay, for the end of the part, I did. Okay, let's uh, say I want to watch, I want to use the video of, uh, uh, Hone and the adventure intro. So what I do is uh, before I start setting up the script I Go into YouTube and then I open the video of Hone and the adventure now the video ID is This part there's a YouTube watch V equals to and this is the video ID So when you put the video ID in the script, it has to be exactly the same So you see there's a six and then there's a big s small s uh, uppercase, lowercase, it has to be followed exactly this way. And since the video for Mr. Conan here is 64 seconds, 1 minute 4 seconds, the timeout should be around that time, maybe 70 seconds or uh, 75 seconds. Uh, rule of thumb is just 10% of 20% time more than the actual length itself to give time for the loading or stuttering that might happen. So this is the video ID. And the length is here, so that's, that's the two things we have to keep in mind when we create a YouTube channel. <coughs> you watch this, Poet? Is it the game or? No, no this is a movie. cartoon. Yes, sir. Okay. No, I don't know. Okay. Okay, and that's just it. And don't forget to put it into the loop. The default is Life of Pi, but sometimes it's too long and people, they want shot a video or whatever, so that's your choice. So that's, uh, that's just covers the uh, usage part, and we want to go into the actual tour of the tabs and the options that are available to you during the testing and the radio parameters that we provide now next. So do you have any questions regarding the general usage before we go into, uh, we dive into the actual testing screen part, sir? Any questions? Okay, uh, then, do you think we can have a five minutes break? break. <laughs> yeah. We can yeah. have a small break. And then we can come back and then we will look at, we will start an actual script and we will go through each of the parameters and then go into, for example, uh, the options you can do in walk testing, uh, drive testing. Actually, I think, they, are there any uh, guys who haven't used the AZQ any time? I mean, who are really very fresh to AZQ. AZQ is totally new to them. Only one? You also haven't used it. Okay, so I think it would be better if we start off by giving them the handset also. The one which we have already rotated. After the break, what we can do is, we'll provide you the handset so that you can have a little bit of hands-on while we show you on the screen. So we'll, we are going